Uh, I'm welcoming Claire. Uh, as you know, Claire is an organic master gardener here in Bayfield. She has a passion for gardening and a passion for coaching people how to garden. Uh, two decades ago, Claire and her husband Brad came to Bayfield for a weekend, a wonderful weekend it was. It reminded them of Cape Cod, a place where they spent, uh, where they had special memories together. And uh, so they were so enamored that they engaged a real estate agent, bought some property, and the rest is history. They built a beautiful home, and Claire has developed a beautiful garden at that home, if you're familiar with it. Anyway, um, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Claire. Hi, Claire. Hello. Welcome, everybody. I know it's not, it doesn't feel like a gardening day because it's so cold outside and there was big fluffy snowflakes about an hour ago, but that's okay. Tomorrow it's going to be nicer. You'll be yeah, able to so garden. Why don't we start with a, a, a nice show of your uh, garden? Why don't we see your garden, Claire? Yeah, sounds good. Hi, my name is Claire Trepanier. I'm an organic master gardener, horticulturalist and welcome to my garden. We're gonna be talking today about growing your vegetables inside the box. Inside the box means really a raised bed. And so what I wanna to talk to you first about doing this, and I'm glad that you joined me because obviously you're interested in growing vegetables and this I think is the easiest way to do it. So last year, this is my second year. So last year, um, I had an idea that I wanted to grow vegetables, especially with the COVID situation happening. And I've noticed a lot of people in Bayfield have been doing the same thing. So the first steps are your site. What you want to think about is sun, because a lot of the vegetables require at least six hours of sun a day. So what I've done, this is facing south. So what I'm gonna do is plant my sunny vegetables, such as tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, um, tons of vegetables that are basically fruiting vegetables. I will be planting them here because once this tree is in uh, leaf, then you're gonna have shade here, which is perfect because some of the vegetables that I'm growing, like the green ones, like uh, kale, um, Swiss chard, spinach, they don't like a lot of sun. They still like some, they like four to six hours a day, but not as much sun as you would in this garden. So as I, I said, you wanna think about when you're siting your beds, you wanna think about the sun. You wanna think about a water source. Make sure that you have a water source that is really close by. Otherwise, you're gonna be coming out here, you're making lots of trips from uh, you know, inside your house or on the other side of the house. So lots of water, you want some sun, you want stuff that, you know, provides some shade for different types of vegetables. So when I started this garden, it was all grass. And I wanted to make it easier on myself. And so what I did is basically took some landscape cloth, um, which is a black material cloth. I laid it on the ground and then put some underneath it. I put, well, to keep it down, I put pegs inside so that it'd keep it down. And then after that, I just bought some bricks, edged it, very easy. Um, and then mulched it. And I wanted to mulch it because, well, first of all, you can leave it black if you want, that's up to you. I would think that the vegetables would grow, <coughs> excuse me, a lot faster if you had the black material around it because it attracts the sun. But maybe in the heat of summer, that's not a good idea. Because honestly, in the heat of summer and when there was a drought, um, my tomatoes were feeling kind of eh by the end of the day. So anyways, that's why I put the mulch down. Um, the other reason why I put the mulch down is um, some of my vegetables are trailing vegetables like butternut squash, 
um, or zucchini. And so it was great. I was able to get it to trail all around the mulch on the outside of the box. So it wasn't taking space inside the box. Um, so that's the easy part. Next is also, okay, so I put the black landscape cloth down on the outsides of the box, but on the inside, I didn't want to do that. I did it to just on the outside here to protect the wood, but I didn't do it at the bottom. And so what I did was put newspaper down on the bottom. Um, and as you can see, there's no newspaper here anymore. So it basically disintegrated over the winter um, and over the summer and there's no grass. So this is a no dig method, which is very, very easy to do. Just have to think about your site, get the sun, get the water, lay your boxes down and then put some newspapers at the bottom of this. I usually wet the newspaper so they're not flying all over the place. And then you add the soil. So the soil is very important for any garden. Um, and for, especially for in boxes, you don't want to just put a bunch of triple mix in it because what's gonna happen is that the soil will get compacted. There's nowhere for it to go and it'll become very, uh, almost like clay, it'll, it'll uh, compress. So what I do is I use, as I've shown, I have samples here. It's a one third, one third, one third mix. So the peat moss I use to retain the water, the sheet manure is for nutrients, and the triple mix is also to make the soil fluffy. Um, you don't wanna put any garden soil in it because it'll, again, as I said, compact. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is your plants. And this is the fun part. You have to have fun and enjoy what you're doing because that's the whole reasoning behind gardening. You wanna enjoy the experience. You wanna get out in the fresh air. So don't get too stressed out about the plants. Learn from your experience. Last year, it was my first year really doing a serious um, vegetable garden and I had I, I wanted to grow uh, Brussels sprouts. I know that's not everybody's favorite, but my husband and I love them. And so I grew them. And then all of a sudden I started seeing this, you know, the pretty white butterflies that kind of flit all over your um, garden. Well, those pretty white butterflies really like to lay their eggs inside the Brussels sprouts. And so the following day, the, the uh, white flower, sorry, the white butterflies um, babies were eating my um, Brussels sprouts plant. So what did I learn from that? I have to put a little canopy over it to keep the white butterfly from laying eggs. So anyways, I, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, growing your plants. There's different sources. You can buy your seeds and grow them inside. Some can be grown inside. I've got this really fun one, which I think is going to be a lot of fun, called banana legs and it's a yellow tomato and it's supposed to be really um, very tasty. Now the other one that I bought and I couldn't resist because I love country music is the Boxcar Willie tomato. And apparently it says, uh, yes, it's supposed to be really sweet, prolific and produce big, huge tomatoes, which I love on a piece of toast. Seed packages are one source of um, seeds. But another source is the food in your fridge. So I grew, I bought these tomatoes and they were at um, a store uh, over the winter that I absolutely loved. So what I did is I saved the seeds and they were like almost like a pea size type of uh, tomato. So anyways, I saved the seeds and now I'm growing them. I believe it's called a red currant um, tomato, but I'm not 100% sure and I don't really care. I've done it before and honestly the crop that we have is, is so good from it. There was um, one that I saved years ago. My mother gave them to her friends at their park and everybody loved them, but I didn't know the name of them so they were called Claire's Tomatoes after that. Um, 
And the other one, let me see, you can buy seedlings from a garden center, and that's another way to do it. Now, what I wanna stress to you is a pack of seeds, and there's probably, I don't know, 100 sometimes in them, only costs about $3. So if it doesn't work out, no stress. Just learn from your experience as I did with the Brussels sprouts. Um, and I guess that's it. Just go out, have fun, enjoy your garden. Watching a new love grow. Watching an old. So, um, just so everybody knows, I've started this business in Bayfield, providing world bowls is what I'm focusing on um, that are available for purchase at Shopco. Um, of course, because of the COVID lockdown, they're available curbside. So what I do is I post a lot of these pictures on Instagram. And so, you know, you can let me know if you want anything. Um, and I can just provide it to, uh, to Shopco. So also I cut, I'm going to provide cut flowers from my garden. Um, and that is obviously garden dependent. Right now, tulips are the big thing. And I also have some um, beautiful forget-me-not so I can do put together a nice little arrangement for, you know, if you want to give it to somebody as a, um, you know, feel good gift, let me know. So also, I love it when people share their garden with me and back to the garden coaching. Um, I used to have a gardening business in Toronto and I've done a lot of digging over the years. And I decided to focus more of my energy on my own garden and also um, coaching other people. And I love it when people invite me like Peggy and Luke and other people invite me to share their garden with them and talk about, oh, here we go, and talk about their garden. So those, these are some of the things that I, um, will be providing through Christy Bloom's Floral Creations. And so when I provide you with the advice, um, Shatco, they're two young, wonderful men, 26 and 30 years old, I guess, well, young to me. Anyways, and um, they will be doing garden maintenance and garden services, um, and they can be contacted through, I guess, Facebook, um, if you want them to do um, provide services for you. Okay, Claire, we have the, uh, the presentation is ready to start here. That's awesome. Okay, so vegetable gardening inside the box. I can't see my notes, by the way. I guess I'll have to just wing it. Um, so this is, I just want to let you know, this is not my garden right now. This is the garden um, that was there, I guess, probably back in July of last year. So slide. Okay, so we, I already touched on the plants. So what you wanna focus on is easy vegetables. If you're just a novice gardener, and easy vegetables are things like, for example, there's, um, I don't know, I classify vegetables in three different categories. There's the root vegetables, like your beets and your carrots. These are very easy to do. There's also the fruiting vegetables, which, um, um, they, they range from tomatoes and as you can see here this is a butternut squash that I grew in my garden last year which is from seeds that I had in my um, from a butternut squash that I bought last year so I just used the seeds from my fridge and the other one I have here is the tiniest smallest um, melon I've ever seen and it ripened and it was only two inches large but it was pumped with flavor. <laughs> so these things are a little bit tricky to do, but your tomatoes are easy, cucumbers are easy. And then the third um, area of vegetables, which are pretty easy, are the greens, I call them. And so the greens can typically be categorized as a cool vegetable. So they'll be growing now. Um, you've got you know, spinach, lettuce, kale, um, you know, a whole variety of different types of uh, cool vegetables. So the other thing that you want to think about is what do you like to eat? I mean, if you don't like, let's say radishes, why are you planting them? I know they're an easy vegetable to actually grow, but you know, it's not worth your time. 
I remember when I um, helped a kindergarten class in Toronto build a uh, vegetable garden. It was for Earth Day, actually, that we started the seeds. And the, the parents were saying to me, well, why, why would you want to plant radishes? I mean, my child's never going to eat a radish. Well, when those children harvested the radishes, and then I put a, and they cleaned it, and then I put a little sea salt on them, they were gone in five minutes. So anyways, just to keep in mind that you never know when something is growing out of your garden, you may like it, you may change your mind about the radishes or whatever. So sources for plants. Um, I taught touched on that too. So next slide. Well, they tried to bear us but they didn't know we were seeds. Uh, next slide. So what I think is important when you buy a pack of seeds is you read the back of the package. So for example, with this one, it's a, oh, it's, let me see, a couche d'été, summer squash. Anyways, it'll give you all the information, when you should be planting it, how far apart that the uh, seeds should be, um, how deep the, the seeds should be, and also when they'll, you can harvest them. So. If you're going to be direct sowing, which is putting the seed right into your raised bed, typically you would do it, and it says here, a frost-free time. And frost-free, usually in this area, I would say is the third week of May. And so you would plant it third week of May. So um, it's 45 to 60 days, I think, before you can harvest. So that would be probably mid-July. You'll be harvesting your zucchini from July, August, September, and maybe at the beginning of October. So next slide. Ah, again, your refrigerator or your cupboard. So um, this is a pepper plant that I'm actually growing right now. I've got the seeds, they're about three, uh, that I planted about six weeks ago and they're about, I don't know, four inches tall. Um, also, back to the tomato seeds is, you know how they have a film around them? So what you have to do is take the seeds, soak them in water overnight. Um, the following day, you uh, drain them or strain them or whatever, not strain, drain them. Anyways, and, uh, and then you dry them, you know, on a, on a paper towel or, you know, a regular towel, whatever you want to use. And then you can actually um, plant your seed. That film around it may, if you don't get rid of it, it may inhibit um, germination. So next slide. Ah, have fun. I, I actually, you know, did you know that you could grow all sorts of, you know how you see those packages of, you know, dry seeds? You can grow any one of those into a plant. So I grew one year a chickpea pea plant and you can see it, uh, the one tiny chickpea. Um, there's only one pea in a pod. It's not like the uh, regular snow pea, or not snow peas, but other sweet peas. Um, so what you have to do with the chickpeas, because they're quite large, is um, you want to help the germination of the seed by soaking it in water overnight. And then you'll see in the morning, there'll be like a little tail um, on the chickpea, and that's actually the root. So then you can, um, I started mine indoors and actually I'm gonna go get one. one. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the chickpea plant that I have here. And so I started it indoors. The key with the chickpea plant is that you wanna plant, if you're doing it, starting it indoors, is um, they don't like to have their roots disturbed. And I think most legume seeds are like that. Um, because they have nitrogen fixing nodules on the roots, whatever. Anyways, they just don't like to be disturbed. So what you want to do is if you're starting inside is to put them inside a cardboard, um, uh, you know, those little pots that you can get. Um, and then you can just not take it out of the pot, but directly plant it inside uh, your, your box, your raised bed. Sorry. Anyways, I thought I'd show you my little this is a little magical thing. It's the, uh, and it doesn't matter. I think it's a, uh, what is it? Horse ticket, horse, something or other. Anyhow, off topic. Next slide. Les Cloches. So as you saw, there was a lot of snow. This is my garden today. So 
underneath these clutches, I have, um, one of them has kale and the other one has lettuce. So the reason why I put them on there is to protect them from the cold, first of all, in at night and sometimes during the day, like today, but also it acts like a mini greenhouse. And so the plant will actually grow faster in this type of environment when it's covered like this. Now you don't have to do a clush as such, it, mine's more just like a, a fun thing to do. What you could do is if you want, um, you get a piece of plastic, clear plastic, and you form like a tent and you would use like a P, I guess it's PVC pipe and then um, do like a hoop garden and you do the hoop from one edge of the bed to the other and then you attach the plastic to it and that will act as a mini greenhouse um, to get your plants going. Now you'll see here also I've got carrots growing and then on the other side there's lettuce. So what I did was um, I think the reason why they've grown so quickly is that I planted these seeds last fall and they stayed in the garden over the winter. And surprisingly, there was one day that I actually pushed the snow aside and they were still green under the snow. So the snow was acting like a blanket for these plants and protecting the, them over the winter. So the reason why I planted them in the fall is that they will grow a lot faster than if I planted the seeds now. Um, there's only so many vegetables that you can do that way. And those are what they refer to as the cold weather vegetables or the root vegetables or the greens. You can't do that with tomato plants or you know your hot weather um, vegetables. So next. Okay, so you wanna plant. So this is a traditional way of planting, which is in rows and it works very well in certain settings. Um, and so the nice thing about it is that you can access the vegetables within those rows. Um, it can be weedy and there's a lot of wasted space, really. So the next slide, square foot gardening. So Mel Bartholomew is the fellow that developed this about 20 years ago. I think that the book is available in the uh, bookstore, Village Bookshop, um, for this process, which is Basically it, as you can see, they use every square foot of the garden. And there's a certain formulas that they use depending on the plant. Let's say you're planting radishes. Well, to maximize the space in one square, you would plant 16 radish seeds. And, but on the other hand, with a tomato plant, you would only have, because it gets pretty big, you would only have one vegetable, uh, tomato plant in one box. Next, and of course the non-traditional style, and this is my garden as I showed you. Um, I like to incorporate flowers in my vegetable garden and the reason for that is your fruiting vegetables um, need pollinators. And so if you put flowers in there, then they will come to the garden, build it and they will come. And uh, they will come to the garden, they'll not only pollinate your flowers, um, but they'll also go and pollinate your, you can see there's a zucchini plant right beside it. And then I, you know, all sorts of other fruiting vegetables. Oh, also, did you know that, I mean, I didn't know this before, but tomato plants are self pollinating, but they taste a lot better if they are pollinated. So there you go, who would have known? So if you grow it inside, it's not gonna taste as good. Next. So this is my rooftop garden in Toronto. So I wanted you, like, if you're not interested in putting, you know, doing all the work that I did, actually it wasn't much work for me, but anyways, um, you can grow vegetables in containers too. And you'll see the slide on the, or the picture on the left-hand side. So I've got kale, eggplant, and a cedar all in one container. So if you can imagine, this is the south facing um, deck. And so the reason, uh, for my planting is I put a cedar in front of the kale because I wanted the kale to be shaded um, because the kale does not like a lot of sun. And then the eggplant I put with and exposed it, that's on the left-hand side, exposed it on um, with full sun because 
It's a fruiting vegetable and it likes full sun. It also provides a little bit of shade for the kale. Now for the kale, this is kind of like the three sisters, I guess, right? But these are the, maybe the three amigos or something. But anyways, um, what the kale is doing is that it's covering the soil so that you won't get, your soil won't get as dry when you're, um, if, it's not, if it's not exposed. So on the right-hand side, this is a combination of uh, zinnias um, grown from seed and also, uh, so they're, you know, attracting the pollinators. Um, and also you'll see all that green stuff in the back. Those are tomatoes. Um, oh, just one other thing I want to talk about tomatoes. There's two different types. I don't know if people know this, but there's a determinant and there's an indeterminant tomato. And so the determinant will only grow to a certain size and only produce so many. Um, they're, they're basically your bushing type of tomatoes and will only produce so many tomatoes. Whereas the indeterminate, it just doesn't know when to stop. So it'll start producing in July and will produce until, um, I'd say like, depending on the weather, it could produce until October. Um, this is a vining type of plant. So you have to allow for a lot of room for it, but I have a lot of it and it just was climbing up the trellis and um, it was quite happy and produced a ton of tomatoes. So next. So this is my lovely husband and he tells me to get out, enjoy and have fun. <laughs> ah, and then you can come and have a glass of wine after if you want or during whatever. Anyway, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the books that are available at, at uh, the Village Bookshop, um, because this is kind of like a short and dirty, you know, type of presentation. So it's a lot to take in. But these are excellent books that are available. The, this is called The Beginner's Guide to Growing Great Vegetables. And honestly, I don't think it's, I think it's either for, um, it's not just for beginners is what I'm getting at. It's also for the novice and, you know, I learned a few things from it. And what I liked about this book is that it, each chapter, it was broken down by month as to what you're supposed to do in the garden. And it also covers, now this author is from Portland, Oregon, but thank goodness, um, covered a whole region from one side of the country to from the Atlantic to the Pacific and also incorporated um, Ontario and the southern um, provinces. And so you can go through and it'll show you, okay, well, I'm in the, uh, you know, northeast um, area. And so this is what I can do right now. And it's a no fast kind of a, a fun book, actually, to go through. Next slide. Oh, I love this one, Plant Partners. And again, this is, goes back to maybe my three amigos, but also the, um, uh, the three sisters. Um, you know, companion planting is basically what it is. Whereas, the, you know, with the three sisters, they're helping each other um, grow and produce. Um, and so typically I thought of um, companion planting as being repelling bugs, but actually it's not. It's actually, there's a lot of uh, science um, that has been put into this about companion planting that would obviously improve your plants, health, yields, and productivity. So it's a really good book and it's got great pictures. So No Dig Organic Home and Garden. Um, what I like about this book is that it goes one step further um, it actually provides you with ideas on what to do with your vegetables once you've harvested them. And it's not just cooking or preserving, it's also, um, you know, preparing calendula balms. Um, that's B-A-L-M-S, by the way. Anyways, and um, just various ideas. The one thing that I thought was really intriguing in this, they ha also had uh, they taught you how to make, you know, those, um, those wax covers that we put on our dishes now. They actually teach you how to do that in this book. Now, I don't know how that, uh, you know, how that relates to plants, but hey, you know how expensive they are. We can do it ourselves. Um, okay, so next one. Ah, veg in one bed. 
So again, this is a great month by month tips on what to do in your raised bed. Very simple, beautiful pictures in it and beautiful drawings. The only uh, comment that I have about this book is that um, it's based on a, um, a temperate climate. So Hugh is talking about a garden in England. So the um, zone for England is zone nine which is, as I said, a temperate climate, very different from ours, which is zone six. So what you wanna take into consideration when you're looking at this book is um, that they are, we are six weeks behind what they are because they do a month by month also in this book, but really good tips. And it, you don't even, you know, like the, all sorts of different ideas about pests and everything. So it's an excellent book too. So thank you for joining me. Um, and now I guess we can go to the uh, questions. All right. Well, thank you, Claire. Thank you. Everyone has really enjoyed everything so far. Great. And, and that's a great plug. I would encourage everyone to sign up for your Instagram. So that's Christy Bloom Floral Creations. That's correct. Thank yeah, you. So it's, it, it, I'm sure you you update that quite frequently and that'd be fantastic for people to get those updates. Definitely. Okay, well, let me go to the, the, the question log here. We've got a, a few that have come in along the way, but I'm gonna take us right back to the beginning. We had questions out of the box, <laughs> right out of the gate, sorry. And uh, uh, first one was on, is from Tina. And she wants to know what are your thoughts are on triple shredded mulch? And it looks really great, but does it work? I've never heard of, oh, you mean like a, three different types of wood? So like a hemlock, a cedar, and a pine? Because I know that they do sell them at uh, Verbeek's and I, I think it's excellent. That's what I use in my garden. The reason why I like it so much is that, um, well, certainly that product that they sell, it's a very fine type of mulch. Okay. And you don't want big chunks of mulch because what happens is that it takes the soil or the organisms a long time to break down those pieces of wood uh, which they could be doing like the organisms could be helping the plants instead of trying to break down the wood so yeah i definitely agree with them i i'm not a big fan of colored mulch um the reason for it is that a lot of the wood that's used for it is just scrap stuff from um, um, you know houses that they demolished or from those um, skids you know that they use for shipping which sometimes are sprayed with various products so that they don't carry a lot of um, uh, bugs as they're well, that's a good tip yeah. stay away from shredded pallets <laughs> exactly and not like that they, it doesn't break down the same way as the, and that's, that's why I put a lot of, I never fertilize my, or put soil, uh, extra soil in my gardens. I just basically put, um, you know, a fine mulch, let it break down, and that provides organic matter into your garden and therefore um, fertilizer. Okay. Actually, and of course, leaves. Okay, we also had a, a question about the canopy. So you talked about uh, using a canopy to... Uh, like a tenting? Yes. What yeah. material would you use for that? Um, it's like a clear plastic um, that you use for it. Um, and like you, what, what you want to do is simulate a greenhouse, right? And um, I know in, in Toronto when I used to work at Green Thumbs Growing Kids and we were um, doing these types of tents, hoop tents, I guess, not tent, well, hoop tents or whatever in um and they would use hula hoops and they would cut them in half and then what you do is take big you know those big bulldog um clips and then just attach the plastic to it so that it doesn't um blow around over the winter and also what they would do um is throw the seeds in in the fall um as i did here and then they will start a lot earlier for them Okay. Uh, question about what's your, do you have a good local source for seeds and seedlings? And what about online seeds? What, what source do you use for that? Um, 
I like to use um, it's Urban Urban Harvest, based out of Toronto. Okay. Um, but anyways, it's really good because it's naturally um, sourced organic seeds. And the woman has her own gardens and then just collects the seeds from it. So, you know, there's no chemicals. Um, the other one is, well, the, the boxcar willy seeds. Hold on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I've got him somewhere. Oh, Hawthorne, Hawthorne uh, Farm. Sea farm. And I bought that at a little shop in Clinton, actually. Oh, that's good to know. Hmm. Shop local. Yes. And these people are based out of Palmerston. So uh, anyway, um, this company. So you want to get obviously local sourced. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, here's one from Emily. Uh, hi, Claire. Thank you for a great talk. Could you please repeat which types of soil you use? Thanks kindly. Yeah. So I use a three. Um, actually, I had said in the... <laughs> mistakenly said it was topsoil in um, the video, but it's actually potting soil that I used. And that's why it's like nice and fluffy um, because it has perlite and vermiculite in it. And it will have, um, a, you know, the, depending on the potting soil that you have, it also has some composted soil in it. So the idea, and so I also put peat moss, which actually uh, absorbs water. And um, what was the third one? Uh, your nutrients, composted manure. Yeah, you had sheep manure or something you mentioned. Yeah. A third, third, third. Um, and every year, so I bought those bags because last year was my first year with the uh, raised bed. So this the soil is going to settle. And so I've got to add, and plus I want to add some more nutrients, et cetera, into the soil for this year's crop. Okay, and someone wants to know what your your boxes are made of. What materials do you use? Oh, cedar. Cedar. Yeah, they'll last longer than the pine. Yeah, and I, you know, on my rooftop deck, my dad built these beautiful pine boxes one year, and unfortunately, after because of the cold and the shifting, you know, they just fell apart and they disintegrated. So definitely, you've got you want to use a hardwood. So you know from experience then that. The pine isn't going to do it. Okay. No, no. Well, okay. Um, three or four years, right? You're right. Someone wants to know where they can get raised bed farms made. Is there somebody that does that here? Well, creations. And also the boys at, um, boys, that's the young men. The lads, at, yeah. At Co, they, uh, they build them also. So, you know, they, they built actually the ones that are, um, I don't know how you say it, like the elevated beds that I have, they built those. Okay, so uh, what, what was the first name you mentioned? E Al Creations, you know, just uh, south of uh, Foodland. Oh, okay, yeah. They've got the signage. Okay, here's a good question. If we're interested in coaching, how should we proceed? So they want to know is, it, can they reach out to you in some way? Sure, you can. And that's through my Instagram. Okay. So again, your Instagram is is Christy Blooms. Bloom or Blooms? Bloomza. Bloomza. Blooms. Uh, floral Creations. Yes, exactly. Or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I can be, well, anyways, let's start there. Yes, do, do that. Okay. Oh, well, here's a a ringer question from Babs. <laughs> Have you started your greens outside already? Yes, you saw that with my plushes. Yeah, I think she asked before you showed it, but. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Well, you know, the um, the kale that I, I, I planted in there, I, I mean, I grew them inside and then put them outside, but like I put the plush over it because even though they're cold weather vegetable, I still have to harden them off. Right, that's another thing. When you bring your, uh, you know, if you're growing inside and you bring your plant outside, um, you got to harden them off, which means that you have to get them acclimatized to the sun and the wind. It right. so takes about a week. Um, it's a, a process, so you'd have to look it up. 
All right. Uh, here's another question on materials. So I think this might be referring to those uh, covers you had, and, I, and it was a French term, so I, I, and I don't remember. Could we just use a plain plastic Walmart bin? Sure. Or maybe that's maybe that's to maybe that's to plant in. I'm not sure, so I'm sorry to TBS. I didn't really yeah, do justice to the question. I mean, I've seen people use um, you know, the big pop bottles, and they cut the tops off, and then they put them on top of the plant. So you can use anything that's clear plastic, basically. The the, the things that I like, well. Mine's kind of like an ornamental um, <laughs> veggie garden and you know, people see it from the street. And so I want it to look nice and be productive. So that's why I use, you know, little fun things like that, like a clutch, but you can, you know, adapt to whatever you want. Okay. Uh, Patty wants to know, hey, if I let a couple of tomatoes fall into the soil and leave them, will the seeds grow more plants? Um, like when, like in the fall or in, yeah, the, in the fall, let's say, fall? um, no, I haven't really had success with that because you've got to uh, think that the tomatoes are like a warm weather plant. It's not like a perennial seed where, um, the perennials need a, a time to harden off. Uh, no, sorry. I need a, a cooling period, you know, um, yeah. when it, down and then they will produce. Um, with tomatoes, I've never had really success. I've tried that before and had not had success. No. Okay. Um, there's lots of compliments in here, so I'm going to skip over those, but please know that people are really enjoying your talk. <laughs> Here's a question from, from TBS about uh, uh, compost. Do you compost your kitchen scraps at all? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I have two bins in the back and they're so full. I have to, you know, um, and figure out a better system. Um, but, you know, with composting, what you have to keep in mind is you don't put, the only thing you do is put kitchen scraps um, that don't have any oils in them um, or any type of dairy products or meat products. Otherwise, you're going to have rodents. Um, I've yeah. never problem in mind because all I do is you know when you're topping your vegetables and you're not going to use certain parts of it that's what I do also with my garden that's a, a good point that you should um, think about putting a composter beside your vegetable garden because there'll be a lot of times where you're pulling stuff out or even cutting back you have to train your tomato the vining ones you kind of have to train them so you'll have all this extra um, debris from the garden that you can put right into a compost bin. Well, that's a, that's a handy tip. Yeah. And you know what one's really good is the, the rolling one, you know, how you can roll it because that produces compost much faster than the ones that I have. Mine are kind of a dormant or whatever they call it. I don't do anything with them. I don't stir them or anything, but, um, anyways, so yeah, the, the ones that you can roll yeah. are good. So I'm not going to say this next one uh, properly. Uh, Sheila wants to know, do you ever use reme or reme cloth to keep seedlings covered at night? And I'm not familiar with that term. Yeah. It was Sorry, but um, no, I do not. Um, but I mean, it's a good idea to protect your seedlings if you're putting them out right now. Um, and you can, can put a cloth on them, but the, the problem is that they're so delicate that if you put a cloth on them, it, it may break them. Oh, okay. So That's what good. you want to do is, you know, take some sticks and then just kind of make it. it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a question here. If someone wants to know where did you get your, am I going to say this properly, cliches or cloche? Cloches? Cloche? <laughs> it's a bell in French. <laughs> oh. Anyways, um, well, Dollarama. Dollarama. What can I say? It's effective, you know. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I have a question myself. Uh, what do you do about rabbits and, and animals that want to help yourself help themselves to your hard work? How do you keep them at bay? What the raised bed is a good thing for deterring rabbits. I don't know why, but rabbits don't like to climb up. I, I don't know what it is. 
Um, they certainly, I have raised beds in the front and, you know, for ornamental garden and they don't climb up there. Only if the snow gets really high in the winter time and they can climb up on top of the snow, then they start eating the bark off my beauty bush. But anyways, whatever. But the other animals, yeah, it is a problem. I've got strawberries that are growing um, in my boxes and uh, I think I got maybe two or three last year. And so the squirrels were eating them. So this year, what I'm gonna do is, um, you can buy like a mesh, it's like a green mesh. And again, form like a protection over your plants so that they can't get at them. Okay, good like tip. We'll have access to sun, like the sun will come through um, the nylon mesh. Okay, there's a comment here. Uh, I see here on Ridge has cold frames to put on the raised beds. I think that's kind of redundant, isn't it? To put on the raised beds. Why wouldn't you put them beside your raised bed? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, anyways, um, I, I don't think that you put them on the raised bed, by the way. Um, I think what it is is that it helps you to, again, get, get your seed started earlier in the winter time. Um, and I think it's a great idea um, to start them that way instead of starting them inside. And again, what you can do is plant seeds in the fall, close it up, and then you'd have an earlier start to your garden. So what are your thoughts on uh, homemade greenhouses like uh, made from storm windows or from, uh, I mean, from, from gauge plastic or, or whatever? Whatever works for you. Um, the thing with that type of uh, structure is that you're not going to have heat inside of it I would assume so it's kind of like a cold uh, not a cold frame but um, when I was working in Toronto um, with Green Thumb Scoring Kids again um, this one fellow had this ingenious idea that what he would do is to keep the, the greenhouse um, it was a cold greenhouse um, warm they painted the, the one wall black on the back so it would attract the sun in the daytime and keep it warm, relatively warm overnight. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think we've come to the end of our questions. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so I think everybody's really enjoyed this. So big, big round of applause for Claire. Oh, get out there and get gardening tomorrow. <laughs> that's right. Any closing comments for us, Claire? Any okay. words of inspiration? Words of inspiration, buy a pack of seeds um, and just experiment. Really, I mean, gardening is really a form of, I guess, botany. It's a science. So, you know, it's not, you just have to work with it and have fun. Okay. Well, thanks for everyone for joining the uh, Village Bookshop channel. And thanks Cla again, Claire, for a great presentation. Yeah, thank you for joining me. and letting me talk about gardening. Uh, well, I think we'll have to have you back. Oh, sounds good to I hope me. you'll do another show with us. Right on. No problem. There's all sorts of, it's a big topic to, you know, to cover. Yeah. Watching a new love grow. Watching an old